Okay, I think we're ready. So um, I'm Roger Sessions, and um, this is, uh, I think, the fourth time I've had the pleasure of being in Colombia. Um, I uh, gave a lecture here at an ISA conference a while ago, and um, uh, I spoke at the conference before this a year ago, and I taught a course at the University de los Andes, and um, it's been great to have an opportunity to come back. I really love it here, and it's a wonderful city. Uh, the presentation that I'm doing is going to be uh, very focused for the business people. It's not a very technical presentation. So, you know, if any of you are very technical, I'm giving you a little bit of warning. This may not be um, what you want to see. But hopefully if there are business people here, this will help you understand some of the issues that we're thinking about in the, um, in the cloud. So this is a bit about what I'm going to talk about. First, I'm going to just give you a metaphor for thinking about the cloud, and then talk about the cloud, and talk about some of the business cases that we see for and against the cloud, because most people think that you know, it's always an automatic decision to go to the cloud, and actually a number of situations under which it doesn't make sense. And uh, understand a little bit more about the cost model and then talk about some of the architectural challenges. And it's really a challenge of the relationship between the business and the IT to get the cloud to be able to be used most efficiently and most profitably. So uh, this is just a little bit of background about me. My background is in um, IT. Sorry. Okay. Go. Okay. Okay. So um, my uh, specialty is a field called IT complexity analytics, and that's really the study of complexity and how complexity affects large IT systems. Now, there are a lot, of, a lot of people studying complexity, but they study it from a different perspective than I do. Most people who study complexity are interested in how complex things behave as they get bigger and more and more complex, whereas I'm interested in using an understanding of complexity to understand how to prevent systems from getting complex. Because in IT, we know how complexity works in IT systems, they fail. I've written a number of books and white papers. Uh, most of the white papers are on my website, which is objectwatch.com. So if you're interested in any more information about some of what I've spoken about here, that would be a good place to go to. I've spoken at lots of conferences, Gartner conferences. Um, so I've done a lot of speaking about this. OK, well, this is kind of my metaphor for the cloud. It turns out that I have a I really, really like espresso drinks, especially a drink called macchiato, which is a little bit of espresso with just a little bit of milk foam on it, which is shown here. So that's one of my weaknesses. And if I ever see an opportunity to get one of these, I always do. Fortunately, you have a couple of good coffee shops here which serve these, and that's uh, wonderful. Now, there's uh, two possible ways that I could Acquire, I could satisfy my taste for these espresso drinks. One would be to purchase a large espresso machine for my house, which costs about, this machine probably costs about $2,000. Or the other option is that I could go to an espresso cafe. And they both have advantages and disadvantages from the business perspective. If we think about the cost model between these two, so in one case what I'm doing is I'm buying all the equipment I want to, to be able to make my own drinks. In the other case, I'm allowing somebody else to totally take care of it, and um, I just go there and I tell them exactly what I want, exactly how to make it. They do that, and then I just pay them for the per drink cost. Now, if you think about the, the business model for this, it's pretty clear, I think. The machine cost, for the home model, for the home espresso machine model, is 
very high. But then the per drink cost, I say is nothing. It's not really quite nothing. It's probably about 25 or 50 cents or so. And if I go to the, uh, so the, if I go to the per cup cost, oh, I'm sorry, the per cup cost is over here. So this is the home model over here. The machine cost is high, whereas if I go to the um, uh, espresso cafe, then the machine cost is nothing. I'm getting my um, lines mixed up here. On the other hand, the per cup cost is very low if I have my own home machine and very high if I go to the cafe. And that's basically the same business model decisions that we have to make when we're talking about going to the cloud or not. So let's look a little bit closer at the home option. If, 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 you're, if this is being set up in my home, this is what the model would look like. So this is the home espresso machine model. I have the consumer, which is me. I have the barista. Do you call them a barista here? The guy who makes the, you know, people who make the drinks? Okay. You have the barista who lives in the same place. Everybody's in my house. And in fact, the consumer and the barista are the same person in this model. And then we have the espresso machine. All that lives in my house. In the um, espresso cafe model, there's a disconnection between the consumer and the cafe. It's possible that we are all going to be all in the cafe, but it's quite possible I'll be getting my drink to go, so there's a strong disconnection there. I could take that home, I could be at home, and everything else could be at the cafe. But the one thing we can be sure of, we may not know where I am, but we know where these two components are. The barista and the machine are definitely in the cafe, which is owned by somebody totally different than me. So to, if you're going to ask which is cheaper, you really start to have to analyze things and look at the individual cost. It's not an obvious decision which one is a cheaper model, not to mention the fact that it's going to take up a lot of space on my counter. But just looking at the cost, you know, we need to know how many cups per day am I going to drink? How many days per year am I going to be drinking it? What does the espresso machine cost? What's the life expectancy of the espresso machine? What's the maintenance cost? What's the cost per, you know, espresso coffee that I spend, the per cost cup in that case? How much does it cost if I go to the cafe? And all these things need to be factored in before I can intelligently answer the question, which is going to be less expensive to buy my own machine or to go to the espresso cafe? Now, it turns out that with these particular numbers, and these numbers could easily change, the home cost per year of drinking basically 700 cups of espresso per year, which is a very, very light year for me, I can assure you, it's probably very light. The home cost would run about $965, I calculate, not including electricity. And then the cafe cost would be about 1800 So in this particular case, it would cost me half as much to buy my own machine as it would to go to the, to the cafe. But that could easily change. That could change if uh, this cost went up, or this cost went down, or this number went down, or this number went down. Any one of those would impact the overall analysis of which way is it cheaper to go. So that's basically the metaphor that you can think of when you're thinking about the cloud, because the cloud works exactly the same way, except that instead of an espresso machine, we're talking about computers and hardware and uh, operating systems and databases, all of that's kind of uh, clumped together into the espresso machine metaphor. We have the uh, programmer who might be like the barista, and then you have the consumer, the person who's actually going to be using the system, which could be the consumer. Which, and normally, your non-cloud model, the way things are done today if you're not using the cloud, almost always looks something like this, where you have, you have your, your consumer over here. They're using a web interface, probably, to get into the system if they're using your software. Your company is over here, and you've got the hardware platform that you own. You've got the software that the consumer is running, uh, in, indicated by this guy over here. And you have the developers who are developing the system, the architects, all the back-end people who are necessary to develop this and keep it running. So that's your standard IT model if you're not running in the cloud. 
if you are running in the cloud, the model changes quite a bit. From the consumer's point of view, they don't really see much that's very different, assuming that they're using their software system. So they're still using a web interface, and they're still coming in a software system indicated by this guy. But the big difference now is that the hardware in the hardware in the software that is behind the base of the all that is now controlled by this other company. Just like the espresso cafe, where they sell the espresso. But in this case, you are going to them. Now you are going to them. But the chances are that the program that still lives in your company. So now we really have three different entities running the same program. Now we really have three different entities running the same program. So now we really have three different entities involved. Typically, we have. The consumer, the, the client out here, we have the cloud company that's providing the platform over here, and we have whoever's developing this system, uh, who lives and really who's controlled by your your particular company, and that's the basic cloud model. Now there's variants on this. The variants are: uh, is this a what they call infrastructure as a platform or software as a platform? But that just has small differences in terms of how you build this system. It's not really relevant from the perspective of somebody out here. And you also have some other variants like virtual machines that allow you to uh, take more control of the operating system. Más but really from a business perspective, this is a good way to think about it. Buena forma de so pensar en ella, is, porque is la pregunta sería, ¿es menos costoso el hecho de tener esta máquina que pertenezca a otra empresa y menos costoso para usted? Si le pertenece a usted, puede ser más costo efectivo en ese caso. No es tan simple responderlo. Entonces, para poder responder esta pregunta, que... And even, to some extent, consider the maturity of your own company. So depending on what your company is like, that too will impact the, uh, the cost model here. There's one other model that I should point out because this one is often confused, in my opinion, is confused with the cloud model, even though it's really something which I think is quite different, and that is the software as a service model, which would be uh, something like um, uh, Salesforce.com would be a, a software as a service, or Google, you know, the Google, Gmail would be software as a service. To support somebody, but then when that person comes on board, you know, you're going to be paying a lot more than if you can figure out how to architect your system so that you don't need a lot of resources. And often, how you architect your system can have a huge impact on how many resources you need. Architecting your system is generally not going to have an impact on how people use your system, what the daily usage or annual usage patterns look like. But how you architect your system will have a very big impact on the number of resources, the amount of resources you need to service a given number of users. The other factor that has a big impact on your cloud costs is the number of resources. So you, in the first case, I was talking about the size of resources. Here, it's the number of, you know, number of instances of these things that we need to bring out. And this is largely dictated by how many resources, how many, how many people can you get around one of these instances? In the other case, the architecture was around the issue of how many resources do we need for one client. Here we're kind of looking at it from a different perspective. How many people can we get around one of these? So if, again, it would be like the espresso machine thing. If I can go in and um, if, I'm, if I'm going to be sharing one drink with three people, then I can get three times as many people for the same cost than if I'm buying everybody their own drink, or even worse, buying everybody two. Or if I'm with you, you're probably buying me three before we're done with the um, afternoon. So uh, those are all factors that you have a lot of control over, and that can make a huge difference. So here's an example. These numbers are made up because you know they're they're not from any particular cloud vendor, and they're not based on a particular architecture. But the analysis is exactly what you would go through as you're trying to decide the business case for or against using the cloud. So the first thing you're going to need to know is you're going to need to know the number of users you are going to have at a particular moment in time. And then you're going to need to know the number of users that can be uh, taken care of by a single instance, how many people are sharing the Espresso cup. And that's going to tell you uh, the total number of instances you're going to need. If you divide users by users per instance, 
you know, the, the cloud vendors don't care about users per instance. What they care about is instances. That's the, you know, the number of those guys who are, who are servicing the request. So that's what you're going to get billed for. So, so, as you, so you, know, you need to know how many instances. And then the next question is how, many, how much resources do you need for each one of those instances? How many resources is that instance, one of those instances going to consume? So here you need to know the number of instances which you've calculated from back there. Then you need to know the number of resources per instance. Recursos. And these two numbers cancel out to give you que se cancela para la cantidad de recursos necesarios. So bueno, en este momento sabemos la cantidad de recursos sabiéndolos The cost per hour per resource times the number of resources, that's going to give you your total cost in a, a given hour that you have some number of users on the system. And you need to know that. You need to do this calculation before you can answer the question, does it make sense financially to use the cloud or not? Because if this number here, if you could do this calculation over the entire 24-hour day, you know, go hour by hour, and it turns out to be one quarter the cost to do this on your own machines, then that's an argument against using the cloud. On the other hand, if it costs half of what it would cost to have your own machines, then that's an argument for using the cloud. It's not the only argument. There'll be other trade-offs as well, but that's one of the first ones you want to look at. Now, the uh, ideal architecture, and I'm not going to try to talk about this at any length here, The architecture that's going to guarantee that you can get the maximum number of users using the fewest possible number of resources is an architecture that I call the snowman architecture, which I'm not going to try to describe here. But what I would say is that it looks something like this, where you have a cluster of business functions that uh, create a vertical partition with a technical architecture and a data architecture, all which have partitions defined by partitions defined at the business level. I don't think I'm going to try to talk about it any more than that. It's a whole, I just gave a whole talk just on, in fact, I just gave two talks just on this uh, topic. And it's sort of getting out of the business part of it. I call this a uh, snowman architecture just because if you look at these, you know, you see these three clusters of functionality, one business functionality, technical functionality, and data functionality. And we also have messages passing back and forth between one snowman and another. So it's really easy to conceptually see these things as a snowman. Now, without getting into any technical details about what is, how a snowman is implemented, the one point I would like to make here that's important for those of you who are in the business side of things to understand is that in order to drive this architecture as effectively as possible, you need a close collaborative relationship between the business and the IT. Because the business people understand what the head needs to look like. The IT need, understands how that needs to drive down to their levels. And only by working together can this be done effectively. And if it is done effectively, then you can much more uh, effectively use the cloud because you're going to be driving down both the instance per user cost and the resource per instance cost. So this is going to give you the most efficient architecture. And the better you have that relationship and the better you'll understand this approach, the more likely you are to get the maximum return on, an, uh, on a uh, cloud investment. I think I'll leave this one off. So, what am I doing here? so uh, to kind of uh, take a closer, another look at um, the business case for or against the cloud, It depends on, to some extent, whether you're a startup or an existing company. My experience is that those two groups have 
typically different problems that they're trying to solve. So one of the biggest problems that startups are trying to solve is the fact that they don't have much cash. You know, they're trying to start with very little money. And for them, the fact that there is no upfront investment in a cloud type architecture, in fact, most cloud vendors will let you use it for a while at no cost at all. You could develop your entire application pretty much on most of the cloud vendors at no cost. And not until you start running it and attracting clients will you then start to pay cost. Now, of course, you should have done this analysis before you made that decision. Otherwise, you could be in for some very unpleasant surprises, especially if you're a startup and you've laid down a business case that assumes you're going to be making so much per client and it's going to be costing you so much per client. But if you haven't done that analysis beforehand, you're not going to know what it's going to cost you per client. So it's critical that you have done that, even if you're a startup. Because what you don't want is, as a startup, to develop a whole system on the cloud based on the fact that it's going to cost you virtually nothing to in startup costs. But then as soon as you get to 1,000 users, you find out that you're losing you know, $100 per hour every time the system is running. That's not a good situation to end up in. So you need to understand what the whole costing system is going to look like. The other advantage from the startup perspective is that you get very, you know, very uh, linear scale of scalability. You don't really, in one sense, you don't have to worry about how many users you're going to end up with because you know you can always buy more cloud blocks to, to fulfill the, the, what you need for that. Now, of course, the problem is that if you haven't done the financial calculations, it may turn out that it's not financially feasible to do that. And there are many startup companies that once they became successful, suddenly found that the software system that they had put together was no longer financially viable. It was very viable when they had no clients, but as soon as they got clients, it was no longer viable. That's not an uncommon situation to be in, and that's not a good surprise to have. For large existing companies, the uh, trade-offs are usually a little different. Here what you have is, um, you know, they're usually less worried about the startup costs. First of all, the startup costs for buying the software, buying the systems in-house from a, you know, from a bank's perspective are not that great. Plus, they probably have a lot of uh, idle CPU lying around anyway that they can just leverage for this. So they're usually less worried about the startup costs of the project. On the other hand, what they are probably worried a lot about is the high re-architecting costs. So if they've got an existing system that they want to move on to the cloud, there may be a long-term viable financial model for doing so. But if it's an existing system, the chances are that they have an architecture which is not going to run very well on the cloud. You know, they're probably using a typical three-tier IT architecture, which is what almost everybody develops for these large systems. And those systems don't do well in the cloud. They, why don't they do well in the cloud? Well, two reasons. First of all, they require, they don't, they don't a, a given instance is not going to support a lot of users because of the efficiency of the way it's been developed. But even more important, each instance is going to require a lot of resources. So it's going to be very expensive to support. Not that you can't take an existing architecture and put it on the cloud, but it's usually not going to be cost effective to do so in the long run. So from their perspective, uh, they're facing higher upfront costs. They're going to pay more when more users come. They, they basically are facing the problem of re-architecting. It's really going to come down to a decision of does it make financial sense to do what's probably going to turn into a complete re-architecture of the system. Now, this is for big systems. Now, if they're talking about small existing systems, then the effort to port to the cloud is much smaller. But in general, my, you know, my problem space is very large, complex systems. So just to kind of quickly summarize, um, most of this may be a refresher for most of you, but hopefully it gives you some just some ways of talking to the business people and understanding the business issues. Uh, the cloud can be a highly cost-effective platform, but don't fall into the trap of assuming it's going to be a highly cost-effective platform. It may or may not and you won't know that until you start to do some uh, financial analysis of what you're getting into. The startups are going to usually benefit the most. I know, I can't think of any startup that I've talked to in the last year 
that's not planning on starting up on the cloud. You know, it's just the 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 um, the upfront costs are just really compelling. Now, yeah, it's realmente es obligatorio. But it's uh, it's just extremely compelling, especially given the fact that most of the cloud vendors will let you develop uh, most, if not all, of the application. No cost whatsoever. You're not, in many cases, you're not paying a penny until you have to pay a penny. But of course, the long-term benefits need to be thought through in advance, and especially need to be thought through from an architectural perspective. And there, what you need to be aware of the two, the two que tener big issues that are going to answer the question: is it cost-effective? The two big issues that are going to determine that are the distribution of, of the usage pattern that you expect. So you need to understand that when you make a decision. And the system architecture, and of course, you also need to know the cost model of the vendor that you're planning on uh, support, you know, using for your cloud platform. The, the vendor costs, in my experience, are usually not that different. So, you know, they're all competitive with each other. You're not going to find a huge difference, probably, between going to one vendor or another. They, it, at the very least, the differences between vendor will be much, much less than the difference you, you will see if you don't have the correct distribution patterns or if you don't have the correct distribution or the architecture correct. Cualquiera de estos dos aspectos va a tener un impacto muy importante en los costos y no tan. I think that that is about it. Which is uh, these are just some acknowledgments for the clip art, and um, I think that's it. So um, I'd be happy to entertain any questions. I think I'm out of time because they asked me to stop at 12:30, um, but I can. I, May have a, do I have a moment? I don't know. I'll just take questions until somebody throws me out. So, If you have a question, um, get a, a mic. Uh, do we have somebody with a mic down there? Is there a mic? Um, wait a minute. I have uh, an extra mic if we get somebody to bring it around. Can somebody give that to the question people? I'll use this mic. Say. Okay, I think uh, I'm being told that my time is up, but I will um, be around for a, a most of the rest of the day. I'm flying back to Houston on a 1 a.m. flight, so I think that that means I need to leave around 9, but I'll be around for uh, several hours, so I'd be happy to talk to you about any of these issues or any other issues. Thank you all for coming, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to come back to Colombia and Bogota. Mm -hmm.